a lot of jump here from Shopify. I feel like you've got to pick the NM zero here and save your. Well, maybe not. Maybe you save the NM zero and t pick your. Nah, it's got to be. You got to pick your carry here and then save your last pick for speed and hope that you can pick something that counters out the safe lane. Um, I'm just trying to think what you can pick. My my only bet is the Terror Blade, but there's so much magic damage from Hoodwink now that it does worry me that the Terror Blade might get uh, picked off quite a bit. But it is a decently safe hero. That is one of those counters. I forgot about the Brood. So this is one of those heroes that people do pick up fairly often into the Broodmother. And now you just ban something like Sven. You can ban the Life Stealer. And I feel like you're in a pretty good spot, actually. Ten seconds. Yeah. Uh, so it's certainly to be DNM playing this and not speed, right? The last pick. Uh, yeah, this is a safe lane pudge. This gets picked pretty often into the Broodmother lane. And Crystal Maiden Pudge is a great duo. Hoodwink cannot play anywhere near the, the Pudge. Basically, if she gets Frostbitten, uh, Pudge into Hook and like a single Crystal Nova is about 75 to 80% of her health pool. So mm -hmm. it's just uh, free kills. It's Squirrel Season is what I'm getting at here. Yeah, but now uh, Shopify, they, they see this draft and they go, okay, you, you know what the number one problem that 5 rep 4 staff hasn't been addressed yet? It's the lack of tower damage they have. And so Shopify just bans out the Lesher Act that they could potentially run in the off lane afterwards or uh, switch uh, Pango to, to speed and have his Lesher Act run right. in the mid lane. And I imagine they'll ban out another hero that uh, plays off lane, mid lane swap. Yeah, I mean, they got rid of the Nature's one. Prophet, DP, and Lesh, all really big mm -hmm. tower pushers that can be played in the mid or off lane. Mm -hmm. Um trying to think what the last one would be it's got to be beastmaster or <laughs> lichen both those yeah, are pretty uh, good but my guess would be the beastmaster is speed does have more experience with that one i think they'll get rid of the beastmaster here they've got 25 seconds of reserve time to think about this one Ooh, speed tide. tide yeah uh, i'm surprised that that's uh, what they decided to get rid of it's a really good team fight disruptor and it also allows you to catch the storm spirit Right, that Blink Ravage on Storm could set you up for a really good fight with Pango follow-up as well. Um, and they actually have no way to deal with Tidehunter right now. Like, there's absolutely nothing. Outside of, you know, Hoodwink's ult, but that's not even a guarantee. All right, Dyer's okay, get rid of Ursa. So that leaves Sven into the pool if they want to try and go for a Sven here. What do you think? for uh RTZ. do they go back for the razor i feel like this game maybe not so much but it is a possibility as it does really own the pudge late game as well yeah i mean you're trying to take care of the things that fight super well into uh melee off laners here you get rid of both the Urza and the life stealer it maybe a sign they plan on flexing with pudge to position three uh, no nah. still have a couple of options on five red four staff I feel like they just don't want to have that bad core matchup because Pudge can't go late game if those two heroes are at all in the pool. They just want something that uh, play at least fast. Like, what's your solution here? Okay, that's a good pick. Well, you go for the Drow Ranger. And this does protect the Beastmaster as well. I mean, you can still pick the Beastmaster here, but it's mm -hmm. not a good Beastmaster lane. Yeah. Uh, you have those uh, boards cleared out pretty quickly yeah, you keep a good amount of distance from the beastmaster he can't get on top of you very easily and when your lane support is a rubik you are going to struggle as well oh well, you know that you're playing against the draw ranger in the save play now how do you just drown this one you got five seconds to go welcome to another exciting game of dota they go for underlord i'm not sure i like this their team essentially has no damage through bkb but I don't know what offliner you could have picked to answer that problem anyway. So it's a little bit difficult. They have good catch, though, with the Underlord, right? The Atos plus the Pit of Malice is really difficult for the Storm Spirit to play around. It's good at dealing with Broodmother as well and protecting towers. So, well, check this out. She's just got the ideal Draw Ranger set. You got the Meow Ranger. The Cat Ears? I'm just going to pretend you didn't say that. It's fine. All right, we can move on with that one if you want. The man's nah, got style is all I'm saying. It's all, it's all right, I'll give it to you. That being said, it would be better if he had the Crimson Witness uh, cape instead of the gold cape, as the red cape looks. Oh, but it's all right. Not everyone can uh, be perfect. Not even RTZ. 
I mean, it would clash with the rest of the set. Actually, the gold kind of clashes with it. I don't know. Let's uh, back on top with the draft. I mean, I'm at four staff. We're going to run this uh, Underlord against them uh, again. When I spoke to some of the players on five route, when I spoke to uh, Double A, I was told that Speed had PTSD from Saberlight running this Underlord against them. So the abusee become the abusers here, maybe? It could be. It could be. That could be what we're looking at. I would say overall, it's just a, it's obviously a comfort pick. It's not bad into the Pango mid as well. And it gives them really good initiation onto the supports. Like Crystal Maiden can't play into a Storm Spirit late game. You need like four staff and glimmer cape, and even then you 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 probably still die in the initial zip. So it's a great pick. Yeah. Well, we'll see if it works as well against uh, Shopify Rebellion as it worked on uh five rat from Shopify Rebellion uh, a couple of weeks ago. I believe those were very quick games. Yeah. Two uh twenty-six minutes. All right, here we go. Ladies and gentlemen, game number two of Five Rat Four Staff taking on Shopify Rebellion. And uh, I don't know, man. This game, I'm a little bit more unsure in terms of draft. Like, game one was honestly kind of cut and dry. Like, it looked pretty straightforward as, in terms of what Shopify are going to be able to do in that game. And they, you know, definitely had the outdraft. This game, I do like the Rats. I do. I think this safe lane Pudge should have a really good game. And if they can find ways to get on top of the draw into the late game, which I think is going to come down to red two more than anything, then I think they uh, they might be able to take this one. And we'll see if they can do well in the safe lane pudge. I think that's going to be the big question. Now, one thing to note is uh, five by four staff did need a little bit longer before we started this game. They asked for a little bit of extra time before we started. Question if that was strategy time or there's some internal issues after they lost that first game. Uh, probably you bathroom think? break, I would say most more likely. Like a 15 minute bathroom break, huh? I mean, chances are like they were getting ready to go into draft and one of them was like, crap, I got to pee, you know? And uh, luckily this isn't the DPC. You don't have to pee in bottles, so. <laughs> Let him go to the bathroom real quick. Uh. I don't know if you remember, but back when uh, Brax was playing for Zoomers and uh, I think a couple other squads, uh, every game after the draft ended, he would go to the bathroom or something. The team called it his ritual. It sounds like a ritual for history sure. Will be made That's interesting. On this day. Not actual history, make believe. Shout uh, out to Brax, by the way. Yeah, it's a legend. I miss that guy. Yeah. All right. Two for two on the runes. DNM just cutting out these trees in the bottom lane, which makes sense. You're up against a hoodwink and a broodmother. You just want to kind of give yourself as much vision to play around in the lane. And you have gone for frostbite level one. You'll probably pick up hook. Yep. This is honestly a kill threat. I mean, if the hoodwink gets out of position for even a second, you can put her in the danger zone. So we'll see how this goes. Mid lane matchup though. Neff, break it down for us. What do we got here? We got uh, Storm Spirit up against Pango here. Red 2. Want to hear that he's been playing a lot of this tournament, but uh, Storm Spirit does have a decent amount of kill potential off onto the Pango. Of course, you go that 1 1 1 build, and if you sit too low, uh, Storm Spirit can very quickly put like 300, 400 damage into you. Yeah. I mean, you do have the damage advantage on the Storm Spirit as well, which is not easy. <laughs> so, let's oh. see. Yeah. He's uh, doing reasonably well uh, so far. Wave uh, is walking in right now. He's going to tank uh, a decent bit of damage for this one. But as long as he gets his bottle uh, for the two-minute mark, he's going to be just fine. There's range creep tonight there by uh, Red 2, though. Yeah, yeah he's he putting on as one. much pressure onto Abed as he can before he hits level 3. Yeah, that Vortex is going to be a really big problem. And Abed's got three denies, so he's going to hit this pretty quick. Dude, he just crushed that CS lane. Yeah, he just hit all of them. A near perfect CS from Abed already on the Storm Spirit. People are like, oh, Lamel, Abed Storm, you know. But let's be honest, this dude's an absolute beast on this hero. One of the best. Okay, unless he just tanks like three tower shots. <laughs> but he got his bottle refilled. He just wanted to spend the mana. Two minute water runes coming out as well. Right, wanted to spend the HP too, right? It'd be inefficient just to bottle up at full HP. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. He got the HP trade there, I guess, red too. It was worth it. Yeah, Courier picked off by Moose here with Fly Sentry and Tango's on it. That's the second Courier I think he's gotten. Oh no, Fly got Speed's Courier earlier. Okay. Yeah. Oh, 
They're gonna be out of region here in just a second. You got two tangos left on the chain protector. You got uh, no sentry ward and be able to de-ward your small camp here. You're under some pretty heavy pressure now on fly. Yeah, he's gonna take a lot of damage just from these two heroes. And I, I kind of like what they're doing with the wave. They're just gonna try and force Drow to CS in her tower. She is not a hero that CS as well in her tower, especially with just a single point in Atrophy Aura. Um, we'll probably see him go 202 in this lane just to try and reduce that Drow's damage and her CS potential. So, yeah, this is going to be rough. Like, he, he's farming well right now. He's 13 and 4, right? He's CSing very well on the Drow still, but it gets difficult the more levels that we have in the Underlord here. Well, uh, that being said, they're going to try and turn it around. They don't have the level 3 yet on speed, but the Telekinesis ends up throwing Fly out? Oh, no! Moose! You saved him! I hate to see it. I guess he thought speed was in a lot more trouble than that, but he he threw him out of the firestorm and the auto attack range. That completely saved the uh, the tree protector there. Bottom lane, there's the the good old Pudge into hoodwink matchup. Pretty rough, but the NM has to be careful. Has to pop the ten wand charges. AB one. He oh ends up frostbiting the hoodwink for the kill, so that will be first blood and saber light. Insatiable hunger is about to expire. They're gonna go into him. They're gonna they have a frostbite for one spell, and I mean, they got him. Hook. They got him, hundred percent. That is the good old frostbite into hook, and just like that, the bottom lane Double off to a kill great for start. Double one. He's too good. And Red Two is bullying Abed in the mid lane. Four minutes. The runes do spawn. He will get the bottle refill and a nice, nice deny on the water rune. So, oh, he didn't get yeah. the bottle. Wait, did he? He didn't get the bottle he's refill. He's forced to deny the rune because uh, Moose is coming there. He could have telekinesis away from it. Is he going to lift him away? He's got to deny the rune here. Actually, Red 2. He oh, could try he to go in. up anyway. No yeah. mana for the swashbuckler or anything. Abed will be able to bottle through this. And a really nice bushwhack here. They can turn this around. He's got the vortex. They will just settle for the Rubik. Yeah. yeah. This will come in handy. Beautiful place. Oh, just no mana there on the Pango. Couldn't do anything. If he had a single spell, they easily get the kill off of the storm. But... Uh, but it's checking, make sure Red 2 isn't able to follow up with any spells. Speed might be in some trouble. Okay, never mind. He's less, he's less in trouble now. Uh, he needs to catch this wave, though. Okay, he's got it. There he goes. Time to pull. So two points Firestorm, plenty of mana. I'm sure he's just going to pick up, like, the early headdress into, like, mana boots. Okay, grab himself a Wind Lace for now. Oh no, he went Tranquils, and he lost the whole wave. Oh no. Oh, speed. Oh, 81. Getting a run down, down here in the bottom lane. Yeah. Okay, I mean, that's really good. Uh, losing that whole wave is uh, not great, though. The Trake's choice is interesting, too. I don't know how I feel about this, because usually you're just... You're hitting heroes or getting hit by heroes when you're sitting here on the off lane. I don't know how useful this is going to be. But he's going to, to combo up with the Soul Rings, which so at the very least uh, going to have mana to spam out his Firestorm off a of cooldown. It is a little bit Into weird, it. for sure. I mean, I'm assuming he disassembles these eventually, but... I don't believe you can anymore. You can't disassemble Tranks? Oh, I guess you have that, like, 30-second window, but maybe you can't afterward. Oh. Hoodwink might be in some trouble here. Managed to cut the tree swashbuckle up, and the chase continues. He's got a bushwhack. The DD rune? Is it going to be enough to help him find the kill? They have the frostbite. Ooh, doesn't get the auto attack. So, will go the way of the drow, who is off to a fantastic start. That being said, Moo's top lane. Going to get ran down here by Fly. One more auto attack there from Arteezy. And now Speed in a massive problem here. Will he be able to finish off the Drow? Nah, pops the stick. He's plenty healthy and speed body blocked off by Fly. Double kill now for the Treant Protector and these side lanes are starting to crumble. Yeah, in the bottom lane, uh, Saber Lake putting a lot of pressure on Dean. He was chasing him on a tower until just a moment ago where Red 2 was forced to rotate in and now he's getting chased back away from the wave again. Uh, less than a 1,000 net worth advantage, but things are about to take a serious turn for the worse. And... I mean, Dinam's dead. I think he's just gonna die of this forever. He pops the flesh heap, but they just chase him under the tower. Your your crystal maiden hasn't been bottom for like four minutes. I mean, they figured he was going to be fine. He took that one death there on uh, CM after he got the the kills, and all of a sudden things are turning in Saberlight's way. Speed is Blue dead speed again. again. Up in the top lane. 
I mean, these tranks aren't doing anything for you. No, I, I, f I don't understand the tranquil boots. Like you could honestly just go for like wraith bands in this lane and then buy mana boots. I think you just buy like two wraith bands and go mana boots here. Most of the damage he's taking is physical, isn't it? Yeah. Getting whacked by the draw ranger, the dream protector. I mean, you've even less movement speed than regular boots once they're broken. This is another lane where it's like they, like last game he last picked primal beast in a not good primal beast lane. The the underlord is not particularly oh, good as no. well. Okay, yeah. You've got level six on the brood mother now, and Pudge is in some serious problems. Doesn't have that level six for the dismember. A uh, saber light will just get a double kill and mid lane. You're gonna lose red two. This game is now crumbling for Five Rat. They are they are unable to play in both side lanes now, on any hero. Like no one yeah, can come bottom. The only thing you were going for you was the mid lane, and all of a sudden that gets turned around on you as well. And she tries to commit, but uh, ends up going down there too. And now yeah, but I bet it's just farming your jungle now. I mean, you, all you can do at this point is try to make a play with the Rolling Thunder. You move to one of the side lanes and hope that you find a kill here. But uh, DNM still isn't even level 6 yet. He doesn't have the dismember to work with. I feel like they've got to be playing out of their comfort zone or something. Like, I'm not really sure how they got to this point. Abed's eyeballing Red 2 bottom, and they have crit to follow it up, and that Pango is dead, man. Oh, no. His swashbuck gets interrupted by the bushwhack. So he's not able to swashbuck away than Rolling Thunder out. He's just dead again. The only person that had uh, a decent start to this game is beating Abed in the mid lane. Get shut down. Yeah. His TP is now going cooldown. He has to walk out of base. Don't look now, but DNM also might be in trouble here. Is Crit's gonna find him in the jungle and just yoink some of his creeps? I mean, he if he gets he gets level six off of this, so they can't just telekinesis into the dismember. Oh, you're kidding me, dude. A little bit too greedy with the hook. If he just goes for the dismember, Crit dies, and now they're gonna turn around. Moose, he's gonna burn down to Saberlight. Yeah, that's just. I think just a little bit of greed coming out from, or just um, maybe they're just uncomfortable. I'm not really sure, but they're just making a few too many mistakes now on the side of Five Rat. You weren't supposed to come out of lanes uh, this far behind with these heroes, and it's gonna get hard for them now. They try to commit onto the Abed, but I mean, can they it even chain stun him down? Stun? They might be able to. The hook <gasps> it saves him. Oh, it oh no! Abed's gonna He's get an illusion now, rune. But... Dude, you're kidding me. Dismember mid will come out to the brood, but. Moose is getting chased down by spiders in the backside of the fight. And these things uh, reduce it by percentage based damage. He might just go down. He's gonna be able to survive, but. They lose red too. They get saber light. They lose crit. I mean, maybe one dies for this one as well. So you get a couple heroes there, but. That was a rough hook, man. <laughs> that was a real rough hook. I mean, I I feel like they're on different pages right now. Like there there has to be like a level of tilt uh, that's happening you know what right this now. This is this is definitely just like an experience thing on the pudge. I mean, he's a bronze pudge. He doesn't know how fast dismember comes out versus how fast uh, ball lightning comes out. He thinks he's going to be able to get the hook and then follow it up with dismember, and you just don't have the cast point for it. You actually can, but. In the tree in line the there, it's really right? hard. Because you can't... Like, if you have to turn your hero, you're done. And usually what happens is people hook and will, like, move forward a second. And then you have to, like, turn your hero 180 degrees and then go for the dismember. If you hook while standing still into dismember, the turn rate doesn't affect the dismember. And you can get it off every time. But it's they like... They seem to be, like, pre-targeted as well. Like, yeah, as they you have come to... You. Exactly. You have to cast a dismember during the hook. And hooking into tree lines is really difficult because you get fogged, like you can't do anything. Which there it is. Does get the hook this yeah, time into exactly dismember, what you were but talking about. nice interrupt there. Big overgrowth from flies. Four heroes on the backside gonna get hit by the remnants, and in comes Sableye as well. But rolling thunder though, gonna do some work. Is Abed Storm? He's out of mana. If they can actually find these kills, it would be huge. RTZ is here on the Drow Ranger. Silence out into the multi-shot. Will catch Underlord, and he's going to pop now. Red 2 in some trouble. Swashbuckle away. But the chase continues. Saberlight on top of him as crit will hit him with the bushwhack, and the damage is done, man. Oh, Double no. kill for the Drow. 
Yeah, uh, the hook. Blocked by spiders, though. Yeah. They're falling apart, man. It you are so far ahead already on Shopify. 4K lead here, just 12 minutes into the game. You have a stolen bushwhack, which is quite nice here for the uh, Rubik, but... I have not felt the Underlord, man. I really haven't felt his presence. Yeah, the... I mean, I think they saw the Underlord. Uh, saw Shopify running it and thought, yeah, that was great. Let's just run that now. Uh, without the practice, unfortunately. He just hasn't had time to, to play enough games on the Underlord. He tried to go for Tranks. I mean, again, he's level 4 on the Underlord. He's level 4 on the pubs. He's, they're clearly inexperienced on these heroes. They haven't been playing them enough in pubs. Yeah, it could be that. It's it's weird, too, because they got the double kill on the bottom lane early on, which did set them up for a pretty strong safe lane. But then the thing is, is none of that gold went to the Pudge. It all went to the, the CM, and then... They didn't stay bottom. Like, they never punished the Broodmother. And Broodmother doesn't get, like, shut down 1v1 by almost any hero. She just sits in the lane, right? You don't... You can't really push Broodmother out of the lane 1v1. So, he ended up getting a lot out of that lane. And then, of course, that level 6 timing. Very strong from him. So, Guardian Greaves are done on Saberlight. 13 and a half minutes into the game. Curry is dead though, so he yeah. can't send the match to himself, unfortunately. Which blade done on Storm. That is huge. That's gonna be a lot of damage coming out from this hero. Where are we at on our TZ's Drow? So he is saving for that Aghanim shard right away. Wants to get the hypothermia up, wants to kind of It is pretty much your best farming item on this hero for sure. Ooh, top lane, speed, gets found. Nice telekinesis play here from Moose. He's going to be able to drop the Pit of Malice, and Overgrowth is going to cancel that TP on out. It's a rotation in from Crit as well. Will help secure that kill. Storm could have gone... Ow. <laughs> Sometimes you just get bonked, man. Uh, lucky. He could have popped the, the region around and tried to chase uh, Moose, but I think he's just going to focus on farming instead. And that's exactly what he does. He goes on the other side of the map, grouped out. They really want to find a kill onto uh, Saberlight here. And unfortunately for them, the Guardian Greaves are coming in. They're going to throw down to the Frostbite, and he's just going to pop them and walk away. Yeah, absolutely. There's the Guardian Greaves. Oh, they do get a nice stolen. That's the Bushwhack effect, though. You stolen Bushwhack. You needed that so bad. Saberlight's still somehow surviving as a second Frostbite comes through, but Red 2 will finally pick up the kill. He just soaked so much damage. Yeah. That, oh, that, bushwhack, that bushwhack just, just expired. expired. <laughs> <laughs> that kill doesn't happen without it. I Dude, thought he'd be out of that one for sure. 2,500 damage is how much they did to that Broodmother. Mm, sounds about right. I think keeps you alive for a while when you're sitting at low HP and you got the Guardian Greaves. That region amp is uh, no joke. How much is it a second? 18.5 bonus region a second. Yep, and, and 10 armor. armor. Yeah. No wonder everyone's building this thing. Top lane, Gus comes out onto the Underlord. DNM trying to hook him to safety. It might actually work. The Pit of Malice comes down, but the multi shot from the Drow will clean him up. Pango is here, but so is Crit. A sick bushwhack onto two. AB1 trying to get back into the fight to throw something, but it's an overgrowth from Fly that's going to secure a triple kill now for Artor as Moose on the side, <laughs> channeling that sharpshooter. Silenced up, can't get on out. And Arteezy's Drow looking for the ultra kill. No, Abed's going to steal it. Four kills now for the side of Shopify as the top tower will fall as well. A wise to, uh, five rats tricks. I mean, they see this early game lineup, but they decide, all right, best way to respond to this is just moving around as five. They start playing this one incredibly early. DNM has not had a chance to, to come online this game. He's still working on his Agnum Scepter. Yeah. You usually have this done at like 13 minutes on a position one pudge. Position one pudge, like, in a good game should have like phase boots ags by like the 14 minute mark at minimum like especially in a lane where you should have the advantage but yeah i mean yeah. it was rough for him he started dying after they got to those initial kills it looked like it was going great at the beginning and he thinks okay i'll build an early vanguard i have this ring of health and then he realizes the Vanguard's going to come online too slow. He needs to get the Aghanim Scepter finished up uh, quicker. Oh, but... Gus caught Red 2 into a bushwhack. He's dead. Telekinesis, he ends up stealing the, the remnants here on Moose, but 
no way to get out of here. And another Vortex will catch speed. He's got no help coming his way. And they're just crumbling one by one. The chase of Shopify never ends. They get three kills after the Roshan. And DNM, yeah, he's got your Ags. So you, you can definitely use that to try and defend the high ground. But this Pudge is not survivable against the Drow. Yeah. I mean, with the storm spirit balling around, all he needs is this BKB. You talked about this one at the beginning. BKB completely shuts down the five route line. If you can hold him in place with this member, but Abba just zips across the map. He's going for DNM. Yeah, I mean, he doesn't it's have any dead. way out. He used everything. That's just a free kill. So he buys out the Ags, but Abed just gets a nice kill there on the storm, using the tail end of that arcane rune. He gets out. Meanwhile, on the other side of the map, artizi has got his hurricane pike completed, so speed can't do anything to him. And an instant D war there from crit, nicely done. You have a blink on fly as well, dude. Look at how farmed these supports are. Yeah, I mean, again, supports are approaching the net worth of uh, speed right now. On his underlord. Blink dagger's done. That's gonna shut down the Pango's game. I mean, the guy's got no way to dispel it. Does he have? Egg Shard coming out right now? Is that what uh, he's working on? No, it's Blink Dagger, but again, you just blink on top of the Pango when he's ulting, pop the overgrowth, and half the duration of your ultimate, you're just stuck. You're not doing anything. Yeah. That plus the Drow can just kill you through it, right? Like, when you're not moving and Drow's just able to attack you. Okay, they get a Brigand's Blade for the Pango. That is, you know, the item we've talked about over and over again for uh, Red 2. And that might be a, enough of a damage boost to help them find some uh, some kills, but you're 12,000 sure gold behind right now. Yeah, this game is pretty far gone. You're almost on a pipe right now on Saberlight. Uh, he's just 250 gold off. Yeah, bottom tier 2 falls into the outpost. You have the shard on crit as well, so Boomerang is uh, online. Vicinity of Dyer's top tower, I put on a hard hat. That baby is coming down. And Both teams are gonna smoke up. up. Who's gonna find who? Mid lane, DNM. Walks right in. Gus comes out to the high ground. They didn't really see where exactly they were. So they're looking for them now. Abed is so comfortably far forward. He's got the Aegis right now. He's got nine second BKB. He's afraid of nothing. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, they have not been able to make anything work with this Pudge since that early lane stage. Uh, they do have Blink Diffusal now on the Pango, which is quite nice. They try to go for a quick little swashbuckle on the hook there. Doesn't quite connect. Uh, Saberline just goes right back to farming. They have no real way of stomping him. Yep. Once he got this pipe finished up, there is going to breach high ground. No doubt in my mind. It's the last tool that they need. Yeah. It, it is possible you wait for the next Roshan. Uh, oh, Saberlight? He's going to try and set up a fight here as they just blow up moves before anything starts, and Red 2 is stuck. Oh, playing no. Some, stuck in the cliff. Yes. Yeah, playing some ping pong on the wall. Vortex save for DNM. They try to get out, and that is just an absolute disaster. Two cores dead, plus the support. Triple kill for Abed. I'm having trouble. I'm having trouble thinking about how Five Rider could come back into this one. I'm trying to cope pretty hard right now, but this looks over. It, it's gonna be like the Atos hook plays, but you have Four Staff on Drow, and you have Guardian Greaves on Brood. That's like about it. So it's yeah. really hard to to get people, you know, hooked up into the base. Plus, you have Storm that can just dive in with them, you know? Yeah. I mean, you don't end games this fast on this patch. That's the issue. Joe is out ridging the tower with the Hurricane Pike, though. Moose stealing webs, having some fun. And there it is, the Atos into an instant dispel. All right, I would like to be able to see the ground here, Moose. Can we chill out for a second? Mm, they just drop in a ton of webs on top of each other. <laughs> You do got the zoomies on right now. Dude. I can't lie. You can never know where one web ends and the other begins. You want color-coded webs, perhaps? A green web for Rubik? Yeah, dude. That would just destroy my... That would destroy the viewing experience. This is kind of destroying it right now. Would it? Yes. 
What it though? Just so much shit on my screen that I don't know what's going on. I mean, I guess moves can do some cheeky stuff here with the Rubik webs. They smoke up on two. Round four, I guess DNM didn't quite get clipped there. But, uh, yeah, you've got tier two top just getting ratted out here by Saberlight. They can't really head into the bottom jungle either. They're going to be right under a ward. He will get it, but... But if I was, yeah, they have to leave immediately. I mean, they see Artor. They have a really good ward here on the right side. If they can get the jump on him, but where's the stun no, no, going to no, come they from? They don't have the jump. Tell Abed. No, oh, they've got him. The BKB comes out in time, and Abed's coming in on the backside, able to just blow up the Crystal Maiden. Is now DNM falling low and fast. A bushwhack comes through. He's got nothing in the tank. Can't even get a dismember. Four dead. Artor full HP is now speed. Going to catch a gust there. Up onto the high ground they go, and five heroes fall. It might be a GG early on here, as they've just cleaned them up here on Shopify. Yeah, they saw Stormthrow walk pretty far away underneath that Observer Ward that Moo placed earlier. They knew he wasn't around, but the Arcane Rune just allowed him to zip across into the team fight and clean everyone up. And just like that, they grab two racks, and they bait them outside the base, take the team fight under, underneath their vision. I mean, they're playing amazing on Shopify. Five rack gave them a run for their money the other day, but. You've got like two heroes that can't play from behind, right? Underlord and Pudge. This is why I did not like the last pick Underlord. These are the same hero. Like they are the same hero. So you have a scenario where it's like you can't really play either of them from behind and they both do the same exact damage type. So I don't really know where like the actual team fight was gonna come from. They've caught the drought for the moment, but again, He's got a four staff to dodge this out, and Arteezy getting bonked back and forth, but plenty of heals, and Red 2 ends up getting hooked out oh, by DNM no. as they just can't actually find an opening. They're just all full health here. The only thing that's keeping them alive is that tier 2. I mean... Mantle of Intelligence dropped here. All right. Spirits, they're probably at an all-time low right now. And they go right back to holding the high ground. I mean, Shopify and Rebellion are willing to wait. If you leave the base, they'll take the fight against you. Otherwise, they're waiting for this next Roche. Dude, Crystal... You know it's not easy for them to breach the high ground unless Five Rat lit them. Crystal Main's coming online here in three seconds. I'm not sure if you've seen this. Look at the stat growth. Absolutely massive. Oh my massive. god, the Wraith Bands? Ah, ah. Meanwhile, Speed, dead He's got in mid no lane. Boots. Who He's needs an all in on this one. You got so much armor now. Pudge in trouble. Hey, okay, he's dead. They're just falling one by one, dude. There's there's infinite amount of chase and no punish that can come out from the side of Five Rat Force Staff. It looks like they've given up and they're just kind of having some fun. As Red 2 will blink on over. He just continued to channel up that freezing field, but it will expire. He's got the armor. He's got the armor. He's surviving. He's going to last longer than his cores are at this point, but they will finally pick up the kill. Four dead. And uh, Shopify... I think they know this one's over. There's the GG as Five Rat Force Staff do actually tap out. A top three finish for Five Rat Force Staff. They end up beating Beast Coast uh, earlier, but Shopify still a team too big for them to take down. They managed to take the second game in 25 minutes. Pretty similar performance to what we saw during the DPC. I think they scared them a little bit in that team by mid game number one. They scared them yesterday. Uh, uh, a couple days ago up against Shopify Rebellion uh, when they took a game off of them, but that's going to be it for them. They made a, they made a dream run for sure, but that's going to be it, my friend. It was definitely to just it. two really good drafts uh, from Shopify, like everything kind of coming together. But I think game two, Five Rat choked a little bit in the lanes. I, I feel like they... I don't know. Like I, I said it earlier, I feel like they just were a little uncomfortable on the heroes that they were playing, um, and it just didn't really come together. I mean, this off lane Underlord got absolutely crushed in the lane, and the safe lane Pudge off to a good start, and then just crumbled as well there. So Shopify, a little bit more experience, perhaps, obviously, as uh, these guys are absolute veterans, kind of just know uh, how they want to play this game and play their timings. And again, perfect itemization from them once again. Mm -hmm. well, congratulations to Shopify for moving forward here. Uh... This is going to mean that uh, 
We have to go to a little bit of a break, though. Uh, I was told that Shopify requested only a 20-minute break rather than the 30 that was allowed to them here. Mm -hmm. uh, so our match should be online pretty quickly. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, we will be back here in just a moment as we will have the grand finals of the BTS Pro Series Season 14. It is Nouns playing up against Shopify Rebellion. It's going to be a best of five. I am really hoping we see this go the distance because, boy, are these two teams looking really strong. And Nouns, uh, Neff, you have uh, completely no bias involved in this at all. Absolutely so, not. So I'm really I mean, curious. The best do, team win and now just see? happens to be the better team since you know they're coming in through the upper bracket, obviously. But anything could happen. <laughs> oh my god, I love it. All right, everyone. We'll be back in just a little bit. Stay tuned for the grand finals. This is the BTS Pro Series season 14. We'll see you in a bit.